Hey, what's up? What's up, everybody? And welcome back to. Wait a minute. This isn't Edgewater. Where are we? Hmm. This doesn't look like Canada. And that's because it's not. We are here today on Ashton Corners, a uh, very, very well done map. We're going to start a new series here. Now, no, I am not stopping Edgewater by any means. Edgewater still will be in play here. Uh, but we're going to throw in another series. So this is going to be our old school, uh, smaller scale farming and r ranching uh, series. So we're going to start off, we're going to run through the equipment, run through what we got going on, and uh, just kind of show you guys everything today, and then tomorrow we'll be jumping into some field work. So starting off here in the garage, we've got our uh, OBS Chevy. Can't run a series based in the 90s without an OBS. And then we have our second gen Dodge uh, Dually Cummins. This is kind of our main workhorse here on the farm uh, in terms of pickup. That's just kind of more of a show truck. Uh, up here, we got our pressure washer next to our shop. Uh, we got our 4960 and our uh, KTP 7.4 cultivator uh, in the shop. We're getting this ready. We have our fields that need to be cultivated. Um, these are about the only two things, well, two of the things out of, like, three that aren't really truly old school, uh, just because of the fact of there's really nothing out there good for an old school, uh, snow blade or, um, snow blower. So we got the Pronovost snow blower and the Boss SK. Uh, snow blade for a skid steer. And that's all that we got here in this building. Uh, if we come up here inside the corn crib, we've got our Sooner livestock trailer on one end. And down here on the other, we have our PJ gooseneck trailer. Uh, right here, we've got our John Deere 220 uh, grain head. And then our New Holland uh, 974 eight row corn head. We're going to start with the shed with all of our main farming equipment. Um, this shed here has all of our ranching equipment in it. Uh, here we've got our Case 2470 Traction King. And that is on our international, uh, I think it's like an international 55 chisel. Um, and then we've got our Wilmar Super 600 Spreader. Our John Deere 6000 uh, sprayer, definitely old school sprayer. Uh, and then we've got the ABI 550 uh, chemical trailer. Here is our New Holland TR97 for our corn harvesting. Uh, our John Deere 4400 for our grain harvesting. And we've got our GMC, or our, sorry, Chevy C70 grain truck. Um, we've got our Ellis Chalmers 8070 front wheel assist, the John Deere 8350 drill, and then we've got a International Lodestar 1600 with a Kilbros um, 275 with a auger on it for loading our cedars. This is the other thing that is not really quite old school. Um, but the look of it kind of gives it a somewhat old school look. Uh, it's just there aren't any good rollers out there uh, that really fit in with this. So I kind of had to go with what I got. So we've got our uh, Sunflower 7232 roller. And then we've got our International Case International 900 Cyclo uh, corn planter up there. And then we've got our fuel tanks here. In this shed, uh, right here is empty. This is where our seed totes are going to go. I still got to get those. Uh, but in here, we've got two sets of pallet forks, our Bobcat bucket, and we've got the Bobcat 863 turbo on tracks, um, and then the John Deere 675 skid steer. So in here, I'm going to be putting 
Um, seed totes, that's where the seed's going to go because the seed totes don't have lids to them. And then our chemical is probably going to go over in this building here. Um, so that's kind of where we're going to try and put all of that. And then we'll walk over here to our other shed and we'll take a look at all of our uh, equipment for taking care, taking care of our cattle. So starting off, we've got a Leon uh, silage blade. And if you guys notice the game lagging a lot, uh, this is the first time I've loaded up this save game since the new uh, 1.9 patch. So everything's kind of got to reload. Uh, we've got two International 1586 Sprint Wheel Assists. Both are set up for loaders, uh, both of which are right here, are 2355 loaders. One's got a bale spike, the other has a grapple bucket on it. Uh, over here, we've got a, a uh, XB Hauer. Yeah, Hauer XB loader with another bale spike. Um, and then we've got the ABI water trailer, uh, the Coon Knight mixer wagon, kind of another thing that's not quite realistic for this era, but kind of limited on those as well. Uh, I may swap it out, I believe, if I look here, I might actually have something different. Let me look here. I thought I had a different one. It maybe in this? Hmm. I know I had seen a different feed wagon. I thought I downloaded it, but I guess maybe not. So I'll have to try and find it, and then we'll replace this guy with that. Um, and then we've got the Mac Lander Bale Trailer. We've got our New Holland 116 Conditioner. The Vermeer. Uh, what model is this thing again? TD 190 uh, Tedder. We've got the Vermeer VR-1224 uh, V-Rake. Uh, this is kind of the most old-school, decent round baler I could find, the New Holland BR-6090. And then we've got a John Deere 4850 and a John Deere 5020 diesel. Uh, so that's that tractor is what our... Uh, come on, close the door here you want to close there we go that's what uh, hooks up to our silage blade here so now on this map there are three different places you can put cows we got the main dairy down here uh, which at the moment in this main dairy we have a bunch of Holstein calves uh, we've got 50 of them down here uh, I just bought them so I still got to get feed and everything for them um, I'm going to probably end up buying feed. So we've got this down here, and then we're going to turn this down a little bit and set that on. Um, so we've got this yard that we can put cows, and then up here we've got this, uh, this here freestall barn, or the heifer shed, sorry. Um, so... After our calves are about two months old for our Angus cattle, all of the dairy cows are going to stay down there in the dairy uh, yard. But um, <clears throat> when our Angus calves get to be about two months old, they'll all go down here into this heifer shed. Um, and then over here we've got our New Holland FP230 with the hay head on it. And then I've got a Meyer F, uh, what is it, RT120. Um, I don't really have a whole lot for chopper boxes either, and I couldn't really find anything super decent. Um, if you guys know of some decent old school mods that you guys would like to see replace some of this stuff, um, let me know in the comments, and we'll find a way that you guys can get a hold of me. Because I don't think YouTube will let you put links in the comments. I'm not positive on that. But um, if it doesn't, then uh, 
leave a comment and I will get a hold of you and uh, we can get in touch and uh, we can get that brought into the series here. And so then up here we've got 50 uh, Angus cows. Um, these are all yearlings up here. So um, <coughs> in the winter time, they will come down here and they'll go in with the dairy cows. That's kind of my plan. Oops. Uh, so my plan with the cows, so the dairy cows are going to stay in here all the time. Uh, no matter what, they aren't coming out of this lot. The older cows, um, anything older than a year, will be in that freestall barn up, uh, up the road there during the summer months. So basically from like March or April all the way until like October, November, they'll be up here. And then come that time of the year, they will get uh, moved down here to this yard. So that way they're closer uh, closer in the yard, basically. And then they got a little more shelter. Uh, they got a few more places to go, stuff like that. And then after, um, for all of our calves, as soon as they turn two months, they will come to this barn until they are a year old. Once they hit a year old, they'll go either up there to the free stall or down in here, wherever all the rest of our cows are. And then once our cows hit uh, five years old, whether it be dairy or Angus, then we will be selling them. So um, kind of a just little old school setup here. Um, we'll take a look at the land that we own. So we obviously own our yards. We have a hay field right here uh, on the south side of our freestall barn. And then we've got uh, field 30 and 31 here. We've got 25, 19. We've got 18, which there are strips of hay and then strips of crop. And then we have field 12 here, which is um, field and it also has some strips of hay. We do not own this hay field here right now. Um, I did get lime spread on everything. Everything has been plowed, limed, and fertilized. So all that's left is to cultivate. And then uh, we're going to be putting in some winter wheat. So in September, we're going to do some seeding of that. Uh, we're going to do some winter wheat and then some oats and corn. So wheat is pretty decent, oats is very decent, and then corn is also pretty good. Um, maybe we should put some soybeans in. Those sell pretty well, as do sunflowers. Well, another year. So what I'm thinking here, um, I'm going to do corn on all of our strips, uh, and then 19 and 25 are going to be... Uh, let's see, we're going to do wheat in those two. And then, um, let's see, wheat, wheat, oats, corn. And then maybe we'll put, maybe we will put some soybeans in as well. Uh, so, let's see, whoops. Um, so, 18 and 12 are going into corn. 19 and 25 are going into wheat. 30 is going into oats, and 31 is going to go into soybeans. So let's go ahead. We're going to start off with field 12. 12. Planned fruit. Corn. Lime is done. Mulching is done. Plowing is done. Rolling is going to be needed. First round of fertilizer is done. Um, we're going to leave that as that. Spray won't be needed. Okay, and then next is field 18. Oh. So I apologize for today's video being late. Um, I th thought that I had videos uploaded 
all through the week. I did not realize that the last uh, pre-recorded and uploaded video was went up yesterday. Um, so, <clears throat> um, but I am still getting on top of it, and we are getting it out just a tad bit late. Um, but so yeah, we're probably gonna do a couple days on this, and then we're what we're going to do is we're going to alternate. Um, we're going to do two days of Elm, uh, not Elm Creek, wow. Two days of Edgewater, and then two days of Ashton Corners, and then we'll switch, you know, just keep doing that back and forth. Um, so we're just going to kind of flip-flop between and uh, I think we'll uh, kind of have a good thing going. Uh, I thought it'd be kind of neat to do something old school and stick to the old school for a while, little while at least. Um, you know, we're we're gonna work our way up to being new farmers, um, so to speak. Uh, so we're gonna work our way up. But we're starting out small and old. So just something a little bit different. Um, I thought it'd be kind of neat to do just a little bit different style of a setup. I haven't really done something that is um, super old school. And I kind of wanted to. So I figured... Uh, what better map to get into an old school theme with running land and crops than Ashton Corners? Um, because I like the way that it's set up, especially with the amount of different areas that you can put your cows. So that's one thing I really like about it. And uh, so thought I would just go with it. Perfect. Corn, two co oh, wow, I can't talk. Two fields of corn, two fields of wheat, a field of oats, and a field of soybeans. And I am running precision farming as well on here, so we are going to also have that aspect of it to uh, work with. So that's going to do it for today. Like I said, uh, tomorrow we are going to get this 4960 out and get it uh, turning some dirt with this... Uh, Rostel smash or sorry Ross Ross sill I don't even know I'm not even gonna try but with this old cultivator so we're gonna go ahead and get that rolling uh, in tomorrow's video and uh, start doing some field work so a little bit shorter of a video but I don't want to get into too much just to have to stop today so we're gonna jump right back into it tomorrow and uh, get to hitting it hard. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get something out for you guys today. So, hope everybody enjoyed it. And I hope everybody's looking forward to seeing this series. Um, and I hope everybody enjoys it. So, thanks everybody for watching. And we will see you all tomorrow.